Hello and welcome, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, everyone betwixt. I am Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I'm actually here to do another sponsored video. I've had a lot of sponsored videos lately. I don't call it a sellout, but in the comment section of another video that wasn't sponsored. That's kind of weird. To clarify the reason there's so much sponsored hashtag ad content recently, it's because Wizards have been very kind and nice to it, which is nice. It's nice to be recognised in spite of all the naughty, naughty words that I say, like Cod's Wallet, Springer Spaniel, and Cabbage Patch Child. The other reason that M20 is here as well, so we've got the Celebrity Cup to, to endorse that, which is coming up next week. We've got the streams with Pyrian. I've got this content here. I've got some more content with some arena stuff, the early access event. There's a lot of M20 hype. Once it's out of the way, maybe I'll get some Commander stuff. That'll be nice, but they'll be a little bit less sponsored for a while so I can be more free reign. You know what I mean? Like, jump on the back of a dolphin and fing into the sun. So I've been sent some free product from Wizards of the Coast for some M20 or Core Set 2020, whatever you call it. I got a load of these, like, uh, Planeswalker decks. I'm going to open some of these, I think, at some point in this video and talk about what I genuinely feel about these products and who they apply to and whether or not you should pick them up. Uh, but most excitingly, we've got a bundle. Now, bundles are interesting products because before they've all just been, like, you know, a few boosters in a box... Uh, they used to be once upon a time a novel or book inside them. They don't do that anymore However, this time around they've sort of fancied it up with some extra bits including a promo some foilies and a unique Dice, so what I'm gonna do is crack that now. I probably shouldn't shake it around. It makes a lot of noise Let's put that down. I'm gonna crack this open now talk a bit about how course at 2020 my hype for it prior to pre-release this weekend if you like the video don't forget to like down below share it with your friends and if you got a pre-release where are you going where in the world are you from comment down below let me know where you are and what pre-release store you're gonna be at I myself I'm going down to Atlantic Games I say down it's actually up in the slab it's like two hours from here to play there I'm seeing an old friend of mine that is from that area who's invited me down to the store it's having a bit of a renovation so if you are local to Atlantic Games come down I'm gonna be there on Saturday I'm gonna play the two-headed giant in the morning and a pre-release in the afternoon I'm also going to have my commander deck with me to play some commander and have my mini cube with me as well I'm hoping to hang around for the majority of the day see an old friend see some new faces and meet some members of the community I might make this a thing where if a pre-release is just travel around and go to different stores and meet new people and see the game stores of England because let's be honest England hasn't always had that many game stores so it's nice that they're they're popping up all over the shop and they're sort of up in their game to be on par or at least some semblance of the huge scene that America has. And I say England, like Firestorm in Wales is pretty damn good, right? Anyway, let's crack some packs. What's in the box? Well, right, I'm gonna start with one of these. This is a Magic the Gathering core set a Johnny Planeswalker deck. Now, these are like the intro packs you used to get back in the day with an intro pack rare, as we called them, which is basically one of the un less than powerful sort of rares that's good for limited in the core set or main set. This is an empty box, that's just a shell. You get a plastic casing, you get your interactive pack rare. In these cases, it's a planeswalker. Now, the planeswalkers you get in these are mythics, but in case you didn't know, these aren't the good mythics. These aren't the rare mythics. This isn't really mythic at all. It's not like a one in every f five or eight packs or whatever has one of these mythics. This isn't as good as the a giant that's actually in the core set. These intro pack planeswalkers are essentially sort of like weaker sort of introduction planeswalkers. I meant to give you an idea of what the colour does and what its abilities are. In essence, a Ajani inspiring a leader alongside all the other ones, like uh, Vivian Nature's Avenger, are just weaker versions of their actual core set selves. The problem that comes with these cards is that they're good for intro decks, they're good for new players who want to learn to play some magic. They're fun to play with your kids or your cousins or your friends who are just getting into magic. But once you're like, out of that stage. God, I hate that. The, the, having to bend the packaging to get the card out of that damaging. It always scares me a little bit, even with this sort of stuff. It is foil, but the foiling is actually really dull. I don't even think you can see this foil on the camera there. Outside of like, the intro stuff, there's just no point in having these. There's no point in having these. So they're great for teaching people how to play magic, but they suck everywhere else. They're mildly, some of them are mildly playable in Commander. I think the Jace from a set or two ago was actually considered to be okay in Commander and people were after it. Uh, apart from that, these cards just aren't very good at all and should be avoided. Uh, what's in there? So, you got yourself a deck box that, again. This is good for sorting cards and storing cards inside other boxes. Whoopsie. 
but it's not a deck box per se. It's not going to keep your cards protected. It is flimsy card. Okay. You get a rules insert that no one, apart from brand new players, actually really care about. You get some learn to play magic. This is basically very indicative of where we're at, right? This is what it's telling us the product is for. It is to explain to people how to play magic. Lockstone Life Chant. I'll have a look at the rares in here to see if any of them are actually good. So again, it's for like new players. And a pack, which we're going to crack now. So it's our first pack, of course, 2020. The, it's baggy. It's really baggy. Some of the Japanese packs felt when I was doing the crack in the, the War of the Spotlights. That's really weird. Really weird. I don't know how, how ASMR this is coming out on the camera. Oh, do you like that? Do you like that? We've got the new token. So if you're not aware, if you've not been like paying attention, Corset 2020 has this new token frame, which takes away a lot of the frame and makes them essentially almost like full art tokens, barring the, this like miniature text box down here and the, the, the name up there. So the tokens are actually really cool. Um, Soldier, uh, well, I guess it's on theme of the journey. Uh, what is our rare? Whew, okay, interesting. We're going to crack one more of these to see if I randomly manage to go two for two on the mythics. Here's the good Ajani. This is Ajani Strength of the Pride. He is a four mana Ajani legendary planeswalker with five loyalty. His uptick, you gain life equals the number of creatures you control plus the number of planeswalkers you control. Weird, like we've never really seen that sort of like gain life equals the number of planeswalkers before. But the gain of life thing is quite a normal mechanic to see on Ajani or an Elspeth. The minus two creates a two two white cat soldier token that is named Ajani's pride mate with the ability of Ajani's pride mate, which is Whenever you gain life, put a counter on Johnny's pride mate. So essentially, this is two Johnny pride mates in a can. Because you can at least make two of these before it gets killed, right? It also has a zero, which is if you have at least 15 more life than your starting life total, you can exile this and all creatures target player control. Basically a one-sided wrath. I think this card will see some play if there is a decent white-black uh, vampire deck in standard. A Johnny's pride mates have always been... At least moderately good. They're okay for an FNM deck, for example, and they've been good enough to see play in modern Soul Sisters too. So the fact that this Planeswalker makes multiple Ajani Pride mates is actually pretty gas. I played it in the M20 Early Access event. The stream VOD will be up this weekend. I've also got a, a, a standard gameplay video that will be available in the description and in the cards for me playing Jund Landfall or Jund Scape Shift. I played against and with this card a little bit, I believe, in the Black White Vampires deck, and making creatures that then grow off all your life gain creatures and off your Sorens and off your Ajani's. It's no joke. So this card could be legit, but it's probably not good enough to make top tier in standard. However, it's a miles better than Inspiring Leader. I mean, we can compare them here. You can see what I mean, right? So in these intro packs, you get the rares at the front, and you get these like rule cards at the back, which are just not very exciting. You also get a code to get these cards on Arena. So if you want these cards, if you want these cards, enter this on Arena now. This is up for grabs. I'm not going to enter this. So the first person to enter this gets the deck. If you get the deck, comment down below and let me know. I would like to know. We're going to quickly just see if I can go two for two on Mythics out of these things as well. So the, again, the, the, this Vivian is nowhere near as good as the Vivian that's in the actual set. Uh, you've got the exact same thing going on here. You've got a, 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 a deck plus a booster. Crack this pack, see what's in the booster. Got the rules card. Ooh, see the elementals without frame are actually really quite nice. I like them. not quite the foil swan hinge, but there you go. A swamp. And okay, I went two for two on Mythic so far. Cavalier of Thorns. This is the five mana Mythic Elemental Knight. Bear in mind that Elementals is really pushing this format, both for Limited and perhaps a Constructed deck. It has reach. It's a five six. And when it ends a battlefield, you reveal the top five cards of your library and put a land card from among them onto the battlefield and the rest of your graveyard. That includes In Commander, Gaius, Cradles, Cabal, Coppers, and all sorts of nonsense. So actually, this is potentially a Commander playable card and perhaps a Lands Matters, matters deck where cards in your graveyard as well might be okay. Gitrog, Tatio. Uh, Lord Wingrace. This card seems actually quite gas. And when it dies, you may exile it if you do put another target card from your graveyard on top of your library. It's got a regrowth effect to top of library. A um, noxious revival, should we say. Top of library. Again, pretty good. I think this card is actually playable in some commander decks. I might consider playing it in Tadjova, but... <sighs> I mean, five mana's not too bad, but it's not quite Titania and other five mana cards, so it might just miss out. But it's playable. It's playable. If you've got a Lands Matters EDH deck, slam this in there, unless your list is very tight. Again, do not buy those unless you are trying to teach someone about magic. Let's get to the bit that everyone wants to see. I mean, I, I can't bother to move my camera, so this is pretty zoomed in here. This is a Core Set 2020 bundle. Slide that bad boy off. What do you get inside? You get this weird thing that has, like, a magic logo on it that can... Store dice, I guess. I might put dice in that later. You get a little note for gatherer.wizards.com. 
you can discover a wealth of information at Dragon's Cove, some might say. Also, what's got Chandra so fired up? Find out at mtgstory.com. They're pushing the story, which is good. And they're pushing Gatherer, which is fucking... And they're pushing Gatherer, which is unusual. Gatherer's kind of been, like, left to the waste. I guess the, the pauper updates and stuff, maybe Gatherer's trying to be a central point better than Scryfall. It probably won't be, though. Scryfall is absolute gas. Use Scryfall. It's so good. Inside of the sleeve, as always, you get a cool little poster thing. This is rad. This is... Can I get that all in shot? This is like a Planeswalker logo. That's like the, 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 the mouth of a cave with like teeth and stuff. And then there's a Chandra. Then we've got a Fat Pat box. I'm not going to lie. This is the worst Fat Pat box so far for the last... God, I mean, I haven't seen the Fat Pat box or the or should I say bundle box for Core 19. That's probably similarly bad. It's just dull. It's just not very nice to look at. Uh, compared to some of the other Fat Pat boxes, like the ones Lauren and Khan's all have art from the set on them. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame, I'm not going to lie. We've then got like a little box here where you can keep stuff in. That sort of a divider for the inside of that. And it comes to this spin down. Now, every bundle, every Fat Pack throughout time has come with a spin down that has the logo that's set on it. This, uh, on the other hand, is really big. Let me grab another spin down to show you the size comparison. The first spin down I could find was an M13 one, I believe it is. Yeah, so M13, which was like seven years ago. Don't forget, I'm only 21, so I got this when I was still in my mother's womb, essentially. Um, it is a lot smaller. There's no perception trick here. It's just, it's just bigger, and I like that. Like to have it as a life total, you kind of want to have it like actually big enough to see. The only problem I've got is the coloring. The red on the red on dark silver isn't actually very visible. It's okay. Like the numbers are okay. The M20 is kind of indecipherable because of the the way, the way the dye finishes in the silver. Can you like focus? Look at that. See it? It kind of disrupts the coloring a little bit. It's nice, like in depth of focus on a high aperture lens like this. But I don't know. It looks very, very dark compared to. I quite like dark colors on white or lighter colors, teals and blues and golds, for example. Not this stuff. I mean, they're always a mixed bag. But honestly, I think the fact that they've increased the size is cool. It's a bit of a novelty, but. It's unique. It's unique. I kind of hate all my M spin downs. M13, M12, N10. They're kind of dull. They don't have a cool set symbol. They don't have cool colours. I guess it's practical. Cool. Then we have these sort of reference cards, which tell you about popular formats. Standard, Booster Draft, Commander. Where's Modern? Isn't Modern the most popular, constructive, competitive format? Like, more so than Standard? And obviously, Commander's not really competitive. Where's Legacy? I know Legacy's not as big, but will it ever make it under one of these cards? And they have a Planeswalker Loyalty uh, thing here. And interestingly, there's actually, like... Um, Planeswalker Lord to dice there. Do Ultra Pro make some of their endorsed by Wizards? I'd love to know who officially makes those. And are blocking attacking reference cards. I think these are really cool for actually helping new players understand magic a lot better. I hope they're different in each pack and stuff and you can collect them in a way. Yeah, this is number 5, this is number 10, so I assume they are different. Then we get this sort of sealed pack. I say sort of sealed pack. It's 100% sealed. It comes with a Chandra's Regulator. Whenever you activate a loyalty ability of a Chandra Planeswalker, you pay 1. If you do copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. And 1, tap it. It's got a Mountain card or a Red card to draw a card. It is Chandra Holden the Regulator, which is an alternative art to the normal one, which I'll put on screen here. Because, yeah, it's a promo regulator. So if you're really hot on the Chandra Tribal Train for standard, for your FNM deck, for your Commander deck... This is this is the one you want, the cool promo. Now land packs in these bundles are often like kept sealed by people and then just used to draft with. However, they've given you a reason to crack these open now. Not only do we have this promo in here, this promo Chandra's regulator. Chandra? That's me. Chandra's regulator. We have foil lands. Okay, interesting. Now, I find it both cool and weird. So let me talk through this. They're all unique arts. So if you want to like fall out your deck with a certain foil, you're gonna have to swap the other friends who've got bundles. So that's cool. It comes with 20 foil lands and 20 non-foil lands. Or again, one of each art. Yeah, one of each art. So that's interesting. I don't think it's the set foil. I could be wrong here, but I feel like these and the intro pack reds feel slightly glossier. But not because they're just that might just be because they're foil though. I need to find a foil from like the actual printings, the print ones, to see if they're different. Like I feel like these have been printed in a different sheet. However, I do like it. Like the, like I don't know if the camera's picking up, but the blacks really pop against the foiling, and this foiling looks really nice. Um, it's a shame that the arts are all good, but they're not quite, like, incredible good. Like this John Avon Plains is very nice, but, I mean, we could do with more of those. Actually, I'm quite a big fan of this John Avon Island as well. What am I talking about? John Avon's art is, is the bomb, right? Like, 
He knows what he's doing. He's been doing it long enough, right? I thought I said Cliff Richard then. It's not. It's Cliff Childs. Cliff Richard does not make magic card art. The following's not really shown on the camera. The following is just quite dark and very... I said matte, I don't gloss. It's very gloss to feel. Uh, again, Karl Kopinski makes some great art as well. This looks just almost like fully t metallic here. You can't even see the clouds through it. So it is an interesting type of foiling. That's a Ravnica land, essentially. Uh, where, if you notice, all the others are kind of nondescript. And then we come to the crux of the matter. We've got ten boosters. We've got ten boosters. That's right, kids. Ten. Not nine. Ten. So... But, like, bundles have been weird in the past. And by weird, I mean just not good value. And once upon a time, there were nine boosters and some lands. At least now we've got a, a spin-down. Now we've got a unique spin-down, we've got a promo, we've got foil lands, and an extra booster. I mean, the quality of these have gone up. It used to be a thing that I wouldn't recommend to people unless you were really just looking to pick up a lot of boosters. Uh, and I hadn't bought one for quite some time. Um, but now, I might be more inclined to buy these. Uh, especially if I'm looking for certain foil lands. Because obviously every set, if they get the foil lands for every set, they can be beautiful. Okay, what do we get? We've got an Elemental Token, that's cool. We've got Tranquil Cove in the land slot. So, so you guys know for pre-release and drafting, and if you haven't watched the pre-pre-release for only one, which you should have done, but if you haven't, the basic land can be replaced with a dual color land. So hopefully you'll get all your fixing you need for limited. And then we've got commons and commons and commons and commons. Raising the alarm is back in standard. It's back in uh, limited too. Silverback Shaman, it's pretty cool. Trample, but dies, draws a card. Five mana, five four. Absolute gas card. Uh, more commons, more commons, more commons. Shock is back in the set. Commons. Then our own commons are Mutter Masses, Lightning Stormkin, and Yarok Fen Lurker. This is Lightning Stormkin. This is a 2 2 Flying Haste Elemental Wizard. So it plays well with all the wizard synergies and things. It's also an elemental, so it also plays well with elemental synergies. So this card, I reckon, will see some play in either an elemental or a wizard deck, whether it not be a top tier. And our rare is Masterful Replication. A six mana instant. It says choose one. Create two, three, three colors golem artifact creature tokens. Or choose target artifact you control. Each other artifact you control becomes a copy of that artifact until end of turn. We're seeing a lot of these effects. Like the Sahili from War of the Spark and a similar effect. It's basically another spell to go in Splicer Tribal. Alongside with the Splicer Craft Master uh, Modern Horizons even. And like the old Splicer Cycle that I'm so in love with. It makes golems. I like colors golems. Golems are cool. Six power and toughness for... In limited, it's six power and toughness flashed across two bodies for six mana. This card's actually pretty good in terms of like being just a good co filler, uh, almost bomby in some way, surprise combat tricks and stuff. This is if this is in your pool and you're in blue, you 100% play that card. Next up, we have oh. anticipates back in standard. It's been standard for a while. Let's be honest. More commons that are quite unexciting. Said scorpions back, buddy. Vorst Claw. It's a 6 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Elemental again. Pacifism's back in the limited format. Captivating Garb. Touch of 3 target creatures to their owner's hands. 6 mana. Is that good? Seems pretty good. Renown Weaponsmith. The thing that shoots up all the weird stuff. A card that someone said looks like me. Unchained Berserker. 2 mana 1-1. One, one. Protection from white. It also has plus 2 plus 0 as long as it's attacking. A lot like... Um, What's that vampire soldier? The white one. A bunch of Vanguard, that's it. Whoopa! Villis, Broker of Blood. Now, check out the VOD. We played against someone who turned three reanimated this in standard, and it felt as good. Oh, I think I've got a foil here. As we got a foil. As good as Grizzle Brand, right? It's an 8 mana 8-8. Eight, eight. They haven't messed up that again like they did with the 7 mana. 8 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. It has flying, pay 1 black and pay 2 life to target creatures minus 1 minus 1 to end a turn. It has removal built into it, like baked into it. And it says whenever you lose life, you draw that many cards. Which means for each 1 black mana and 2 life you pay to shrink something, including itself, if there's nothing else on board, you get to draw 2 cards. So it's not Grizzle Brand, obviously. They don't want to print a Grizzle Brand in standard, but it's... It's the closest we're probably going to get in standard for the foreseeable future. This card seems generally quite good. If there's a reanimated card in standard that's good enough, or a reanimated deck, should I say, in standard, this is going to be one of the payoffs. I mean, this might even be able to be played in other reanimated decks in other formats, simply because it's removal stable into the card draw ability. But I guess uh, Grizzleband's just better, right? Oh, okay. Swamp. Foil a Lotus Field and a very cool wolf token. Foil a Lotus Field. Oof. I think I'm probably going to play this in Tachiova. So opening a foil one is pretty good. Foiling just feels glossy across all cards in this set. Not just the promos, even the cards in. 
foil lotus. So the normal ones are pre-ordering at like 11 to 12 bucks. So people are wanting to buy these at, well, CFB pre-ordering at 50. That's probably way too high. But uh, this could this could easily even out at like 20 bucks, right? Like for like a foil playable powerful land that can be seen playing probably modern. So Amulet Titan is pretty keen uh, for this card, I believe. Comes to the play, tap, but it untaps and makes three mana immediately. You have to have two lands in the play when you play it, so it might be only a one over or two of, but yeah, the card seems pretty gassed. That was a pretty good pack, I think. This card could end up being a whiff, but I'm going to go out on my, my way and say this card has generally got the potential to be busted. As has this card, and this was a foil. A very nice foil. John Avon's art, again, knocking it out of the park. Next up, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We've got a lot of commons that I don't care too much about again. Chandra Dravage is back. One very handsome puppy. Cute little dog, isn't it? Looks like, looks like Bolt out of the Disney movie. Murder. Reckless Airstrike again. Incredible art. Uh, Brooklyn Trucker. Yeah. Fry, quite a cool cyborg card. I mean, it kills planes because it kills the fairy, so that's good. A Loaming Shaman, pretty good. Imperial Eagle, I think I'm going to die to that a lot in Limited when I play Limited. Hanged Executioner and a Foil. Sorry, camera cut off there because I'm an idiot and didn't realise that I was running out of time. Hanged Executioner is a 1-1 one, one for 3 that makes a 1-1 one, one and can exile itself to exile something else. Cool, whatever, fixing whatever. Foil Papa! I mean, that's cute. I'm into it. But this, this is the Fabio Cat Token. Now, this is like Fabio the Sexy Model. I'll put a picture on screen here. Uh, this is made by Ajani. It's an Ajani Primate Token. I think it's pretty cool that they're making like, you know, namesake cards off of the Planeswalkers. I'm into it. I'm into it. Next up. We're halfway there. Let's see what we got. Commons that I'm not so excited about. And we've got some uncommons that I'm not so excited about. Sure. And then we've got the new Zombie Token with no border. We've got a Mountain that's not so exciting. We've got the new... The new tutor. I mean, if you're tutoring to mill yourself, like, so you can tutor a fight to the top of your deck and mill it into the graveyard with Surveil and then reanimate, for example, or if you're, like, uh, milling your opponent, then sure, they don't get the symmetrical element of this. But I don't know if this card's gonna be that good. I first thought it might be a one of or two of in, like, Legacy Storm for the go off turn, but people have been telling me it's just not good enough for that. The Seb McKinnon art, though. The Seb McKinnon art, Jesus. Seb, if you ever watch one of my videos, my friend, come play some mediation with me on Mediation Chill. I love your art. You are probably my favorite in the game right now. What have we got? What have we got here then? Soldier token. Tranquil. No, rugged highlands. Commons. I'm doing this all in a very weird way, I know. I know. Hard cover. Herald of the Sun. Steel Overseer. I don't know where this is at these days, but that's like a, a modern playable card that they've put into standard. So that's cool. I wonder if we're going to get any Construct Artifact synergies with plus one plus one cards in the next few sets. Maybe this will have time to shine once the like Teferi rotate out of the set. So yes, Legacy and Modern playable in like uh, Robot Stompy, Affinity, Hardened Scales Affinity, Traditional Affinity. Load of commons. Load of commons. Here's the Blood Vermoons. Is it the Reanimator spell that could, could make the Reanimator deck work? Importantly, you sacrifice the creature, and then you return A, you don't target it. And you have to target to put this on stack. So you can sack a dude, use this to put that dude back into play, or to, to get these to be, to be against like a flicker effect, or to hand, and then put another creature into play. It's pretty good value for four mana. This, this, yeah, it's unique as well, and interesting the way it does it. And again, Seb McKinnon is just killing it with this beautiful art. That's kind of like a homage or throwback to this terror art. Air elemental, elemental cop-outs. <laughs> Dull. Eternal isolations, I love this. I love the, like, um... Oh, what's his name? He's stuck to a rock and his guts shoot out like Change of the Rocks. I can't remember. It's interesting that it's kind of like already the theme of Change of the Rocks again, but on like a less effective version of it. Oh, I don't know. Pain of Cleansing and a Foil Loaming Shaman and an Awakened Inferno Emblem. Huh. Pretty cool pack. Cool uncommon. A powerful rare, I guess. And a cool emblem. No money, but cool pack. I like it. Next up, we have... Wapa, Agent of Treachery and a Wolf Token. Agent of Treachery like ruined me in the M20 event. I was playing Planeswalkers like Big Chandra and they were just playing 7 mana, playing a 2-3 two, 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 and stealing my Chandra. And then yeah, you get to draw extra cards. This seems like a good card in like a Flicker deck, a Borrego deck, an EDH for example, or a Rune. Uh, it's 7 mana, but I mean I'd play this in Limited. Once you get there, you just do the biggest thing, right? Like, seems seems legit. Seems legit and limited, at least. Three more packs to go. Can we get any Mythics? We've got no Mythics in this box yet. We've got two in our intro packs, right? So, Commons. Yes, yes. Uncommon, Uncommon. This is pretty good. This is like, um... 
Thirsty Pride Mate. I don't know what we're calling this right now, but it's a 2 3 flyer for three. That whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one count on Bloodthirsty Art Aerialist. Seems pretty good. Vengeful War Chief. And then we've got a Mythic. We've got a Cavalier of Thorns. We've also got a cool Golem token. Uh, I don't like the art that much because it looks too much like a bloody elemental, though. So many elementals. Uh, I've already talked about this a little bit, but it's cool they're opening another one. Card's pretty gas. What I talked about on the Dice to Removal podcast when we talked about these Cavaliers and the, the, the whole cycle, the Mythic cycle, is that they're the basically the. They're the Titan equivalent. I said that when I don't throw like packaging around. They're the Titan equivalent. I mean, M10 or M11 or whatever it was they introduced Titans. I think it was M11 actually. Uh, made like you know mythics that you chase that were like powerful on every deck. These aren't anywhere near as good as Titans, like Inferno Titan, Grave Titan, Sun Titan, but they're still pretty good. Leyline of Combustion. Don't forget the Leylines are back, boys and girls, and some of the Leylines are really good, like Sanctity and Void especially. Abundance might be like a sort of pseudo combo deck in standard. Uh, the other two being very good in Legacy and Modern. This one, however, whenever you or at least one permanent control becomes a target of a spell or ability opponent controls, the land of combustion does two damage to that player. <sighs> I guess it's okay in the, if a burn mirror is a thing. I don't like this card very much at all. Maybe I'm wrong. For those of you who don't know, Leland's going to play at the beginning of game and like like pre-game effects. So they're a good way of like like hosing certain strategies, but this only hoses like multiple removal spells or or someone burning you out. So yeah, I think it's probably the worst of the ley lines. That's right, worse than the blue one. Don't you at me? By all means, at me. Comment below if you think the blue ley line is worse than the red one. Last pack. Can we get one more mythic? Hydro Denizen. Huh. I love that card for the for trying to force milling gate crash was it and then dying horribly murder is probably the first pick from this pack because murder is too good not to play whenever your creature control dies game one life and draw a card that's a five mana that's not good enough chandra's regulator what a whiff we've already got a promo one so it's not that hot um it's not good in limited so it's not a pickable card it's only good in like chandra tribal maybe chandra oathbreaker i guess so opening one of them just feels like a whiff overall. So that's a shame. So let's do a recap of what we opened in our bundle. Regulator, whiff. Lane of Combustion, whiff. Cavalier of Thorns, hit. Agent of Treachery, this is the middle pile. It's a bit of a whiff, but I like the card. It's fun, I died a lot to it. It was pretty funny on stream, people enjoyed it. Pillar Cleansing, I'm gonna say a hit. I mean, sure, it's not worth a whole lot of money, but it's a powerful card that people want for Commander that I don't mind having multiple copies of, and it's just a very good card to build decks from. So I don't mind opening Pair of Cleansing. It's not the worst in the world. Foil Loaming Shaman. I mean, it's, an, it's a famous uncommon that's had like applications in the past. It might be a good sideboard card in standard as it like, like hurts on graveyard strategies and stuff. So I'm going to put that in the maybe pile. Steel Overseer, undoubtable hit, legacy and modern staple. Skewing Symmetry. This might end up being one of those cards that people hyped a little bit and ends up being a whiff, but I'm going to a hit pile so far. Ferocious Pup. I want to, for the meme, a foil Ferocious Pup, put this in the hit pile, but it's going in the movie pile. Absolute slam dunk hit with a foil Lotus Field. Hanged Executioner. Huh. I don't know where this sits. Like, it's a perfectly good card. It's two power across two bodies that both fly, and it's got removal built into it. Okay, when I say it out loud, it's a hit. I might even see a bit of modern play with the Spirits deck. This guy, where I'm, this is a hill that I'm not willing to die on necessarily, as the Magic players love to say at the moment, but I'm gonna say this card is a hit. I think this is like an intro pack rare. I think it's like in other like constructed sealed product and stuff, but I think compared to the white angel and the red dragon in the same colors and stuff, I think this card is a hit. I think this card has room to be very, very good if it's a decent reanimation spell and standard. I mean, might have just gotten with that bones. And then this card, well, okay, I like it, and I think it's a good limited card, but I'm going to put this in the whiff pile. I don't really want to ever put that into any constructive deck list ever. So, outside of limited, whiff. So, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. Three whiffs across ten packs. I've got three, like, I'm not unhappy to open them, but I wouldn't exactly call them hits. That's been my bundle. That's been the intro packs. Let me know about M20 and what you're excited about. Are you thinking that these, these Cavaliers are generally good? Which is the best one? It's the red one, right? The red one's definitely the best one because it goes in Jun Landfall. If you want to see some M20 standard gameplay, there's a link in the description below or in the cards. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button because it helps me out so much. Share this with your friends. Let me know where you're from and what pre-release you're at. What store are you at this weekend? I've been President Kenobi, also known as Vince in the real world. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this sponsored video. Ta-ta for now.